video will introduce how music notes are represented in a digital environment. Digital music is really the predominant way in our modern society that people listen to music, whether it is a digital broadcast over the radio or using digital media storage such as on phones and iPods and other similar digital devices. There's been a massive shift in recent decades from analog technology such as record players and cassettes to digital formats such as CDs and MP3s and other similar digital compressed files. People often carry these systems with them daily. You likely have on your smartphone several tracks of your favorite music. And these systems are all microprocessor driven and rely upon several encoding standards in order to extract the sounds from a digital file which is made up of nothing more than logic highs and logic lows in a specific format. In order to better understand how these files are created and how to represent digital music, one must understand the notion of waves and different frequencies. Before you continue to watch the rest of this video, I would ask that you would stop and make sure you have watched this other video which I have also linked on Canvas. This video will introduce you to the notion of frequencies and sound and how different frequencies produce different pitches and how different instruments produce sounds that can be visualized in different ways based upon the tone of the instrument that produces them. The pitch of various notes is related directly to the frequency of that note. That is, that when a particular note is played, the ambient air is oscillated at a set frequency. In this case, we are seeing the treble clef and the notes starting at middle C. Middle C is where your hand would be um, if you had a left hand and a right hand in the middle of a piano, and your, your thumb would be right around middle C. And in this visualization that we have here, we are seeing a scale that would go from C4 up through C5. So there are different ranges of repeating letters that showcase an octave. And within one octave, that is the eight notes from C back again to C one more time, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to C being an octave of eight notes, you'll notice that the frequency doubles from one C to the next C. So on the left hand side, you have the note known as middle C because this C is exactly between the treble clef, which is traditionally used for higher sounds and sounds produced by higher pitched instruments such as violins, flutes, and piccolos, and the notes that would be in the bass clef below it, which are typically played by lower pitched instruments such as cellos, basses, tubas, and things like that. Treble clef is typically in a choir used by women singers, and bass clef is typically used by male singers. And so the treble clef are these higher notes and you can see here that we go from C4 right here at a little more than 250 hertz up to C5 a little more than 500 hertz and see that doubling. This A note right here is what is known as concert A and that is the note that most orchestras tune to when they are trying to align their instruments together to the same frequency range and that oscillates at 440 hertz. If you click on the link below in the notes, you will see an entire page which showcases the various notes from low frequency to high frequency, showcasing exactly what frequency corresponds to the various notes. The music that we listen to is typically a combination of multiple notes being played at a single time. So if you're listening to your favorite band, you might hear some notes played by a guitar, you might hear some notes sung, you might hear some notes played by um, a violin, a fiddle, or a trumpet. And these sounds all blend together to make our favorite music. 
And so as these different instruments and voices come together, they get combined and these frequencies get laid on top of each other. As you saw in the previous uh, video that I linked you to, when the violin is playing you're seeing what are known as harmonics and so those are some interference signals coming from the vibration of other strings near the string that is being played. Similarly, we see other frequencies combining with the frequencies that are played. So when people are singing in harmony, they are not typically singing at the same frequency. They are singing different frequencies that are complementary to one another and add to form a beautiful sound. What digital music does is it typically samples from two different locations to create a stereo sound. It may sample from multiple locations to create a surround sound environment. So if you have a stereo with just two speakers, typically what you will have is a microphone sampling on the left side and a microphone sampling on the right side and those sounds are digitized individually and then played back in order to give the um, simulation of a concert sound like you would hear as though that band were playing live in front of you. In lab this week we are going to use a speaker to play a simple mono sound. That is we are only going to use one speaker and we are only going to be playing one note at a time. So how do we create sound? Well in a microcontroller what we will do is generate square waves at the frequency of interest and the different frequencies will allow different notes to sound. And we're going to repeat that same square wave pattern for as long as we want that note to sound. So let's look at an example. As was mentioned, when an orchestra tunes, they typically tune to concert A or an A that is at 440 hertz frequency. And if you were to examine that on an oscilloscope, it would look like a sine wave with a frequency of 440 hertz. So if we want to create that with our microcontroller, we can use a square wave that oscillates at 440 hertz. And we can play that sine wave or square wave for as long as we want that particular note to endure. So what we will do in the lab this week is create, is to connect a speaker that will create this sound for us and our board doesn't natively have a speaker built in so one of the click boards that you received has a speaker on it and this is known as the buzz click clickboard if you click on the link on this slide you can learn more about this particular device these boards take in a square wave signal and they produce the appropriate sound the board will need to be inserted in one of the two microbus slots on the top right side of the board so here you see your trainer kit and in red you notice the two microbus slots. We can insert the buzz clickboard in either of those slots and develop code to produce the frequencies of interest and create sound on a speaker. It is important to note that depending upon which microbus slot you select you must use different ports to send in that sound. If you happen to choose the left slot, RC0 will be where that PWM signal is coming in as indicated right here. PWM is coming in on RC0. If you choose to put the clickboard in the rightmost slot, RC1 will be used to generate that sound. So what do we need to do to create an A440 sound of our own? Well, we need to set the appropriate pin that is connected to our speaker, whether that's RC0 or RC1, depending upon which socket we inserted the speaker in. Then we need to delay, then we need to clear that same pin, and then we need to delay. And the amount of time that we're going to delay is based upon the wavelength of that sound frequency. So as the sound is coming in, we want to have delays that appropriately modify that sound to get us the frequency of interest. And what we want to do is have what is known as a 50% duty cycle where the wave is high for the same amount of time as it is low. In order to do this we must do some calculations. So if we look at 
440 hertz, we can take the reciprocal of that and find the period. As you can see here, the period is 2,273 microseconds. So in order to produce one period, we need to set the bit that is associated with that speaker. Then we need to delay for half of that because what we're going to do is set, delay, clear, and delay. And what we want to do is in each of those delays, wait for half of our period, minus one. The reason we are subtracting one from that is because the set and the clear both take approximately one microsecond. As we know, they take half of a microsecond for each instruction cycle clock. When we account for the toggle time, we're going to take that off as we calculate our delay timing. So one period of the wave will only last one four hundred fortieth of a second because each of these square wave patterns that we produce will take the period of a 440 hertz signal. If we want to be able to hear that sound for a while, we will clearly want this note to last longer. And so what we will need to do is to repeat the code that we had developed of setting, delaying, clearing, and delaying again so that we repeat it over and over for the amount of time that we wish to hear that particular note. And so for the note to last one second, we would repeat that set, delay, clear, delay pattern 440 times. If you wanted to hear the note for half a second, you would repeat it for 220 times. If you wanted to hear it twice, or two times, for two seconds, you would double the 440 and have to continue to see 880 of these square waves. And so in order to do that, we're going to use a for loop. And so here's a basic structure. If you want 440 hertz of sound to be played for exactly one second, what you can do is create a for loop as you see here. And within that for loop, you're going to set RC0 to a one, delay, clear RC0 back to zero, and then delay again. Of course, prior to this, you must set up RC0 as an output and as digital. So be sure you have configured that properly within your code. If you want to play A440 for a specific duration, you can pass in that duration and then you can multiply by that duration inside of the for loop as you see here. And so what that's going to do, instead of simply um, iterating through this for loop 440 times, it will iterate through 440 times duration. So if you wanted it to play for two seconds, it would iterate through 880 times. If you wanted it to go for four seconds, then it would go 1760 times. So it's up to you how often this thing goes through. But if you want to play for a duration number of seconds, then you simply need to multiply that through and that will get worked through. In this week's lab, you're going to develop code that will play a familiar song. You're going to develop some varying frequency functions that you can use to play each note. And then once you have tuned each of those frequencies, you are going to put them together to play a familiar song. And you will do so by developing functions that are tuned to specific frequencies as we go through the lab. Here is the song that you are going to be playing. All of you are likely familiar with the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And so one thing to note here is that each of these notes that are filled in are what are known as quarter notes and the notes that are hollow like this are known as half notes. So the notes that are filled in play for half as much time as the notes that are, so are open. And so when you are playing, what you are going to do is play the tone for this note and then delay with a silence for a brief period and then play this note again, play this note, then delay for silence, then play this note, and then you will ultimately get to this half note and instead of moving on to the next note right away, you will actually just continue playing the same note without a pause so that that note will be twice as long. And so if you put this all together, and play all of the notes in this song, 
on your board, it should sound like the children's song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. 